So as uh, young people, something that you're all very familiar with is the concept of a test. And we all know how much we love tests. You know, the way you look forward and you wake up. Remember in primary school, you used to have, you used to, you used to have your Friday spelling tests, you know, on Friday, you know, Friday maths tests and all that, to make sure that you, you know, test what you've done. You'd, you'd wake up on a Friday morning and say, oh yes, it's Friday. <laughs> I get to do my spelling. How do you spell rhythm again? R-H-T-H-R-W-M-M? Or he, anyway, uh, I, I used to always get stuck on that one. Um, so, and you, you know, you're, so tests, right? Generally speaking, generally speaking, we don't really like them. Um, we're, we're not big fans. And then you might say, well, sure, I don't care about books. I don't need books. Um, yes, if you are, say, we'll say, uh, into athletics, same thing. You have trials. You're going to have to try out for a team, and you may not make it. I don't care about uh, books, or I don't care about uh, sport, I'm, I'm a farmer. Grand. Yeah, you have to back a trailer into a shed with your uncle, your neighbor, and the owner of the trailer watching. All right? There's a test right there, okay? You're just shaking your wing. You know. So all of these things are, are tests in some way or another. They're tests, right? We, we, you cannot go through life avoiding tests. And this, this thing about a, a test is that what it aims to do is just basically show the truth. It just aims to show the truth. Okay? The aim of a test isn't to humiliate you. The aim of a test isn't, isn't to, to belittle you, but it's to show, do you know the answer to this question? This is something you're supposed to know, something you need to know. Uh, do you know the answer? Now, you might say, oh, the teacher didn't teach me, or whatever. Ultimately, you have to know the answers to these questions if you want to get on to the next level. It's fairly, like, I mean, if you can't puck on your left-hand side, you're never going to make it on a senior panel. Like, it's just not going to happen, right? Well, I, I don't need my left-hand side. Like, my, my right, you should see my right. It's absolutely epic. I don't need a left. Of course you do. Um, so, like, these things, there, there are tests, and they push us to our, to, our, to our limit at times, and they reveal the truth. And sometimes we don't actually like the truth. That's maybe why we don't like tests, because maybe we don't like spelling. Maybe we're no good at books. Maybe we're no good at sport. Maybe we can't reverse a trailer into a shed with six inches of spare either side of her. You know, sometimes we don't like being tested because the truth might be that there's a little left to do. There's a little more to be done. Maybe you didn't actually study. Or the test might reveal you are epic. <laughs> the test might actually reveal you did your work and it paid off. You studied hard. You know your stuff. And when you were asked the stuff you were supposed to know, you knew it. You got it right. You know, you put in the hard slog and it paid off, which is a very, very satisfying feeling, especially if you're not maybe naturally gifted in an area and it just took an awful lot of kind of work and you really had to dig deep. And then you actually pull it off and you get the result and it's a, it's a pass or it's an honor or it's a straight A. And you're good. Like this, is, this, this feels great. They asked me the questions and I did know the answers because I worked. Okay. In the Gospel today, uh, Jesus uses two analogies. One is quite surprising. Jesus compares himself to the thief who breaks into the person's house. Right? It's very, it's nice we don't, we can notice like how, what he just did here. Stay away because you do not know when the master is coming. Well, who's the master? That's obviously him. Okay? You can be quite sure of this. If the householder had known at what time of the night the burglar would come, he would have stayed awake with a golf club. Um, <laughs> I would not have allowed anyone to break the wall of his house. Therefore, you too must stand ready because the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Don't have a golf club. So he's, Jesus is actually comparing himself to the thief, to the burglar. Okay? Now, why that? Because, well, it, it's a, simply a, tr a truth that you and I, one day, will all be mystics. You and I one day will all meet the Lord face to face. All of us are going to have an apparition. Right? All of us will meet the Lord face to face. That is going to happen. Okay? Now you can call it a test. It's probably not a great way of phrasing it, but it is kind of a test. It's a form of a test. It's the test of life. Okay? We had our 40 to 80 hopefully years of life here. And you were given abilities. And you were given a certain amount of wealth and a certain amount of talent. And maybe even good looks. And maybe even athletic ability. And maybe even academic ability. Whatever. All these things that we were given. We're given this, this, this a lot of time with these a lot of resources. Okay. And what did you do with them? 
what did you do with them? Now, you might say, well, we had, we had, you know, we had four children, we tried to bring them up in the faith, and then things went a bit hairy because the, there was a problem in the family, but we, we, you know, we tried to forgive, and I found it really hard to forgive my sister-in-law, yada, yada, yada. But we prayed and um, eventually came to a place of peace, or you know, there was alcoholism in the family, and it was something we really had to, had to recover from and heal from, and uh, you know, all of these things that, that actually happen in real-life families that test us, uh, that test our unity, that test our love, that, that push us way beyond what we could ever have considered ourselves capable of. Often you see in a family when, when there's a family member with special needs, whatever that may be, intellectual or physical, uh, it, can, it, can really, it can be very, very difficult for the family. It can really push the family because things aren't as they would have planned them. Okay, but this is, this is what has happened, so now we work with that. And sometimes it's, it's, it's exactly that person in the family that reveals to the family just how capable of selfless, self-giving love they are. You know, if you, if you've, when you've got someone who has a, an issue that's not going to heal, it's going to be with them for their lives, then, you know, you have to, you have to walk with them, be with them. Um, I saw this documentary uh, about six months ago now. Um, there was a family, they had, they had twin boys who had this very rare condition where the skull doesn't grow quick enough when the baby is forming, so it, it doesn't leave enough room for the brain, for the sinuses, and for the eyes, the eye sockets. So then the eyes bulge, and the, the nose is kind of pushed back as the, the whole center of your head, where your, your sinuses, it's kind of a hole, basically. It's all filled with everything else because there wasn't enough room. Um, so these kids, they're, they're, they're going to have very... They have intellectual disabilities, and one of them has um, uh, Asperger's, and, no, the other one, autism on top of that. So it's very, very challenging because you can't, you have to be with them 24-7, 24-7, 24-7, peg feeding and the whole lot. And the, the, the couple were, they, they were exhausted, but amazing. They were exhausted, but just they had now, they had learned a degree of love that they would never have known themselves capable of because they have to give and give. And then when you're empty, give some more and give some more and give some more. So it's, it's very, very interesting how, how, how life tests us. I know it's, it's not a great word, but it, it's kind of the theme for today. It tests us and it teaches us. The second uh, analogy that the Lord uses is the servant and the master. So it's, it's an interesting thing. The master gives the, the servant the job of giving the household their food at the allotted time. Right? Giving the household their food at the allotted time. Now, that would be a whole other homily, because for me, that, that speaks more to, to, to fathers, actually, you know, to, to, be, to be providers, not just, not just of food and, and, and money and things like that, but to be providers in, in a much deeper sense, so we haven't, we haven't time to go into that now. But uh, this, is, this is the... The trust that the master has in the servant. <clears throat> so, the master leaves and leaves the servant in charge. And that, church, that, that servant has resources. He has all the, actually, he has all the master's resources. He has access to these food stores and whatever else. He has a certain amount of power. So he can delegate who does what. And, you know, he has a certain amount of power. But that power is given to him for a certain amount of time. It's not forever. And afterwards... He's accountable for what he did with that time. So the master will come back. And when the master comes back, the servant is supposed to have done his job. It's, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't a particularly difficult job. Just feed the family, right? Just give them their food a lot of time. It's not, it's not, a, it's not a very complicated job. Uh, but that's what he was supposed to be doing. Now, interestingly, I tell you solemnly... Uh, Happy the servant if the master finds him at this employment. I tell you, so doing what he's supposed to be doing. I tell you solemnly, he will place him over everything he owns. To this servant who has the job of feeding the family, if he does that and does that well and as such is caught at doing that by the master, the master then will, will place him over everything he owns. Okay? Now, what does that mean? What that means is even if our... our our lives here might have crosses and difficulties and challenges, which they invariably will. The Lord gives us a limited amount of time here 
with resources. There may be crosses on the way. There may be difficulties on the way. They, they, they will pass. They will pass. Our crosses and our difficulties, they, will, they do not last forever. They may be very, very difficult, but they do not last forever. And then we find ourselves before the Lord. Now, what our faith teaches us is that when we go to heaven, we don't just go to a better place or like a happier place or a place where you can eat as much ice cream as you want and you don't get fat. A place where you can kayak down a river and not get sunburned to within an inch of your life. You can drive as fast as you like and there are no police. You know, that isn't heaven. That's not how heaven works. Our faith teaches us that heaven is us actually being taken into God and sharing in his divine nature. You become like God. Now get your head around that, because I, I can't. You become like God. You, be, you share God's power. Now, what exactly that means, we don't really know. Obviously, I'm not because the, obviously God can bring a universe into existence just by thinking of it. I mean, if I think too hard now, I could just imagine a mountain of ice cream right out there now. I, so I would be dangerous right now if I had if I had God's ability. Um, but it, for all eternity, we will actually be sharing God's power. So He gives us a little responsibility now, and then at the end of time, we find ourselves before Him. He will place us over everything He owns. He makes us like Him. This is our call. Like this is this is absolutely mind-blowingly phenomenal. That if I get this right here, the, the limited time, limited resources I have, if I get that right and live that for the greater glory of God, when I get to heaven, I share his glory and his power for all eternity. For all eternity. So even though, as I say, the, the job the job that he was given wasn't very, very difficult. In the grand scheme of things, what the Lord asks us to do here is not difficult. Do you know what I mean? Don't kill people. Anybody have an issue with that? Okay. Be faithful in marriage. Don't lie. Okay. Now, let's get to the more important ones because you're not going to be doing any, well, the first two, I don't think would be a problem for you. Put God in the first place, which means live your day for his greater glory. Everything you do, do it for him. If it's planting spuds, if it's washing potatoes, if it's hoovering carpets, whatever it is, you do it for the greater glory of God. Everything. And then when things are difficult and you fail, which will happen, welcome to the real world, you say, Lord, I did my best, I'll try again. Or maybe, Lord, I didn't do my best, but I'll try again. You know? And oh, you know, we, we get on with it. All for the greater glory of God. Success our failure, all for the greater glory of God. Praying every day, Mass at least every week. Confession, whenever we need it, especially in the case of mortal sin. The Lord does not actually ask us to do much. Considering what we get. You know, considering what we get in the end, what he asks us to do here is, is quite small. To get eternity with him forever and share in his divine nature. And all he asks us to do here is give people their food at the allotted time. To just do these relatively simple things. Pray every day. Stay away from mortal sin. Stay away from things that lead us into, or people who lead us into mortal sin. Live a life of prayer, of joy, of self-giving love. Model our lives on Christ. It sounds hard, but it's, it's, we're, all, we're all in this together. And it is a test. And sometimes it feels harder than it actually is. But from eternity, when we look back at our lives, we will not regret a single sacrifice we made here. We will not regret a single uh, pleasure that we renounced because we knew it was sinful. We will not regret a single thing. The only regret we may have is that we didn't do it more often. So what we're aiming for, where, what our, the trajectory of our lives, should be heaven. And we can... Call it a test, as I say, it's not, it's not a great word, but, but we are accountable for the way we live our lives. This, this is just the simple truth of our faith. We have a limited time and we are accountable for how we use it. Now, um, just one last little detail. It's always important to keep in mind, obviously, that if we do fall, which we will, confession is there, the Lord knows that we're weak. Uh, so it's not that we get one shot at this. And if you mess it up, we, 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 we do get one life 
But if along the way we fall off the horse, you can get back on. The Lord's mercy is just that. It's mercy. It's freely given. Undeserved, but freely given. So, so there is a way back if we fall. But we do only get one life. And we do have to account for it before the Lord. But on that day, we shouldn't think of this as a, as a test. Because we already know now how it's going. You know now the trajectory of your life. You know if you're at peace with the Lord. You know if you're praying. You know if you're in a state of grace. You know this already. So you can already tell where you are in relation to God. So if there are things we need to change, well then let's change them. Let's stop faffing about and do what needs to be done. And do it now. So that when the Lord comes, he will find us at our employment. I tell you solemnly, if he does, he will place us over everything he owns. Amen.